as you see the Sony CDP 337 ESD has an excellent mechanism and loader. The mechanism is, is um, KSS 190i, probably the best one ever. But this is not about it, it's about a. Um, that's what I'm going to cover it now. Uh, it's about um, digital outputs and it's more so even about um, the shape of um, uh, SPDs as a function of a cable. So I'm starting off with a um, commercially available, it's a 50 ohm coax uh, double screened Teflon coated and this is uh, this is the SPD uh, trace we have. Um, some noise on top and bottom, slight overshoot on the lower corners, but top is basically all right. You would expect that I, I use those kind of cables in um, uh, half a gig uh, installations, whereas this is only 1.8. Uh, megahertz on the SPD signal. You have to kill now the um, um, the output because the Sony only outputs either digital or uh, analog and the second one here that is plugged in at the moment is uh, RG59 bulk standard um, 75 ohm coax and as you see we have a bigger overshoot here and on the bottom but very little noise. Um, the verticals are pretty vertical. Uh, the next step would be to go to um, from RG59 to RG58 and to see if um, the difference in impedance makes um, a huge impact and so the other one was 75 ohm, this is 50 ohm which is less well matched in the and surprisingly there is very little overshoot uh, very little noise perhaps less vertical uh, the transitions from up to down but it looks much nicer surprisingly the next one will be um, probably the only truly audiophile cable that I, that I have and this is a Roxanne Digital Interconnect HDC OID so let's see what that will do Roxanne being an engineering company they didn't put any directional arrows on it let's see what it does Okay, so it is much squarer, but overshoot are there, slight noise on top and bottom, overshoot on both uh, uh, rising and falling edges. So from there we have a very cheap interconnect, uh, buy from big rolls and then cut them to length and this is um, this is actually directional so we'll observe the directionality I think I'll observe actually a bit the difference between going one and the other way couldn't really say which one was uh, better but let's see what's the difference between audiophile cable and a cheap digital cable not that much Difference, if anything, with less of a shoot, a bit less noise, but also maybe not as vertical. Who knows? But I don't think there's that much really in it. So the next one is a, um, a really El Cheapo. This is a Sony branded thing that was given away with equipment in the early 80s. So this is before even digital cables as such were a thing. Let's see what that does. Still pretty vertical but the overshoot getting bigger and the noise is getting uh, greater on top and the bottom. 
So as you see, the, the quality of cable does appear to make a difference. Um, we got two more. We're going again down in quality. This is um, this is a Jaca automotive installation cable. So. Uh, shouldn't expect much here and certainly not digital and you can see it's rounded edges not that much noise but the edges are rounded and um, and they're not very vertical the the transitions from um, top to the bottom the last one I have is also a digital cable, I think also from Wes, but I wanted to, to, to use it because it's um, 5 meter length, just to see if the length of the cable does uh, match to the signal. I don't want to sort of prompt anybody to any particular conclusion, it's just not many people have ability to, to have a oscilloscope and, and look what it is. So. It's a five meter of uh, budget digital cable, but as you see, 75 ohms, so the verticals are much more vertical. Um, very little noise, but there is a bit of, of a shoot. So there you are. I don't think that unless you get really El Cheapo stuff, I don't think there's that much difference. What really makes a difference is what player you're going to get. And if you get one like um, the Sony series or many others that actually do it properly, Roxon does it well, then, uh, then you're going to have a good output. Uh, if you have a CEC transport that doesn't even resemble a square wave. Philips, pretty much triangular, you know, like I say, it's like uh, Sydney Opera House sails, that kind of uh, shape. So. Have a look at the Lampisator side. He he does um, a lot of those uh, squares there and, and those uh, traces, and even on my side, there's you know hundred something videos and I show them whenever I remember. Okay, well thank you very much for your attention and uh, till the next one. Bye bye.